Hey, what's up everybody? This is Etho and welcome back to the second episode of our brand new modded Minecraft series. In modded Minecraft. At where's you? <laughs> this thing is this thing is awesome. So apparently it gives the, the haste effect. A lot of you guys caught on to that last episode. So I think we're gonna wear it. It doesn't give uh very much armor though, unfortunately. Like uh, an iron helmet would. So we're sacrificing armor for uh a speed boost. I think it's worth it though. But yeah, if you remember last episode, so we, we kind of got started here, settled in a bit. We uh, did some exploring, went caving, got smacked around by the, the stone golems down there. <laughs> I did some caving since then as well, and uh, ooh, I, I had to run away again. It is so rough in that cave. I think we got to find a new place to go caving somewhere a little bit easier because it is very tricky without like some kind of ranged weapon. We want to try make a feeding trough from cork we can craft this right yes the feeding trough so what we're gonna do is we're gonna smack that down in the middle here and i think we can just put wheat in there oh it has like an inventory slot okay so if we fill that up with wheat yeah they automatically eat from it so he just ate one that one just ate one and i think they'll just like automatically breed until it runs out of wheat in here he ate another one <laughs> what a greedy guy <laughs> Oh, and by the way, I'm still really tweaking around with the sound settings in our mod pack here. So some stuff might be a little too loud, some stuff a little too quiet. Just let me know if anything seems really wrong to you guys. Uh, check this out, though. I think this is worth sh showing you. So one of our mods is the dynamic surroundings, and that's what adds a lot of these cool uh, different sounds to the game. It also adds the reverb in the caves, and it adds this cool uh, system here for tweaking every single sound file being played in the game even the vanilla sounds like if we want to change the minecart sound you know how it's super loud usually i i got cranked way down you can preview it you can do you can do all these different settings for it stop <laughs> uh i'm noticing the jingling on the armor is still pretty loud though so what i would do is i go armor and it's uh i think the heavy armor yeah heavy foot run walk so I got them like almost all the way down. I might need to just shut them off. I don't know. I'll, I'll go a little bit lower, see if that helps. Okay, I think we got her fixed here. Uh, did you guys notice what was on my back here? Uh, you see this? You see this? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. We got the backpack actually on the back. That looks so cool, doesn't it? And I'm still wearing armor. So you guys pointed out there is a bobble slot here specifically for the backpack, a back slot, which is super cool. So now we can... Just load up our backpack and I want to try upgrade it here. So this slot is for an upgrade. There is so many good ones to choose from. Like there's a feeding upgrade that will automatically feed you. There's a furnace upgrade. There's magnets. There's all kinds of cool things. I thought I would try out uh, probably the one you're going to use a lot. The crafting upgrade. You get that. Okay. Now when we look, put that in our backpack. Oh, okay. So it adds like another tab list here. Aha, uh -huh. so there's our crafting table. Let's try it out. Yeah. And look at this too. We can also change the color of the backpack we want. There's all these different colors we can dye it. And there's upgrades. So if we surround it with iron, we get an upgrade. Then a second tier with gold, third tier with diamond. Netherite too, apparently. Interesting. So maybe it doesn't burn. Uh let's try that out, okay? So let's uh let's take her off. And then we'll surround it with iron. I'm guessing that gives us another upgrade option. But we will see. All right, well, let's put it back on. What does that do? Oh, it gives you more space and a, a slot. Oh, that is so good. Okay, so I think we're pretty much geared up here. We're ready to go. My plans for today is I want to go exploring a little bit to begin with here. Then we are going to do a little bit of caving. And if we can, I'm going to try to automate a tree farm with create. <laughs> Maybe a bit, a bit ambitious. We'll see. Uh, and then uh, build a base. Yes. Okay. If we can do all that, I'll be very happy. That's, that's the plan. This is the base design we're going to go with. So we got to collect all these blocks. It's going to need a lot of wood. So that's why I want to make a tree farm. Uh-huh. But we don't have the stuff to do it. We got to go explore and try find andesite. All right, everybody. So now is the time. Place your guesses. How many times is Etho going to be dying today? We'll find out pretty soon. So we are right by spawn at the moment. Where are we? Yeah, we're over here. So I think what I want to do is go up through the forest 
go up to the forest. There's this lake here, and it looks like it connects to some river system or whatever. We'll take a boat up that way and just see what's uh, next to us here, what biomes we got. So it's like a, a marshland. Oh, we got we got pillagers. <laughs> Bannermen, too. I think those are the naturally spawning raid ones. Oh, that didn't take long. I thought it was way further. <laughs> oh, we got some mud. Oh, oh, something's in the grasses. Here. Wait a second. Let's get on our boat. Oh, the mud is like really sticky. It slows you down. Okay, let's figure out what these things are. You think they're hostile? He's like chasing me, right? Oh, <laughs> they knock you up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love that animation. It's like he's he's grooving out when he gets hit. Boy, he is tanky though. What do they drop? They give you mud horse leather. You don't want to get close to a hippo in real life. Okay. Yeah, and we can't see through the grass. <laughs> so far they're okay with me, right? Oh, Oh, look at these trees. That is super cool. We should collect some of these. Oh, and that's rice. I've been looking for rice. Excellent. That's going to be very helpful for making food and uh, for some building stuff, too. All right, let's chop her down. I feel like this hippo is looking at me here. <laughs> he won't stop looking at me. Even when he's going sideways, he's looking at me. What's going on? You coming after me, bro? Huh? You want to throw down? No, I don't want to throw down. What, what's he doing? <laughs> oh, what are these? Uh, some kind of cattail? Where is that? Yeah, common reed. Okay. We got to try collect all the things here. Oh, and this is a different type of tree too over here. Let's swim by real quick. A lot of people are wondering, by the way, why am I not using Wayla? It's because, I, I don't know, I just thought I'd try it out. There's no mini-map, no Wayla. I kind of like the idea of like we're going around exploring our world, we're adventuring and we're trying to build up our world. Let's do that without like a bunch of stuff on the screen so we're more immersed into the world, if that makes sense. And I kind of like it as well, there's so many new mobs in this that I've never seen before that uh, if I want to fight a hippo, <laughs> I don't know if it has 50 hearts or 100 hearts or 10 hearts, you know, I gotta take that risk when I actually make the decision to go for it, you know? Oh, man. That's like one of those prehistoric birds. Oh, he does clicks, too. I like that. So much stuff to see. That's a bear. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Go back. Go back. Ugh, quickly. <laughs> Everything in the swamps is sticky. That's my boat. Get out of my boat. All right, so we got the witch hut over there as well. We'll check that out another day. I kind of want to keep moving here. But uh, we got a jungle right outside the swamp with some pretty tall hills back there. Definitely sleeping every night here, by the way. Uh, ever since I started doing that, I haven't died. It's it's made a huge difference. Uh, but I want to try grab some saplings, some... Oh, I wanted the cocoa beans. Get some brown dye that way. Uh-oh, a module has settled, flimsy handle. I think that means our tools gained experience. Hello, snake. Oh, oh, there's several. Okay, wait a second. Man, they're hard to hit. I'm glad they aren't poisonous. So, wait a second. I think I see... There's like a... The burrow. Belongs to some kind of snake. Aha! Uh -huh. So that's where they're hiding. <laughs> I'm not really afraid of spiders in real life. Unless they're on me. Then, then I freak out. Uh, okay, so. Also on the left side here. Check this out. It's like a mud flat. We can walk on the mud. Very slowly. And there's a stretcher up ahead here too. Don't really want to mess with anything dangerous. We are not really well equipped at the moment. But... We'll check it out real quick. If there's no spawner, we'll, we'll be fine. I think it's just like a witch hut. Take that. Maybe upstairs. Oh, a brewing stand. 
That's big. Which pupils? All right, everybody. Well, I think we've gone pretty much as far as we're going to go here today. We've ended up in a beautiful desert. I can't believe I'm saying that, but this desert looks really cool. This is from the atmospheric mod. It's got some pretty nice trees here. Very interesting plants as well. So, yeah, let's go over here. There's aloe, which gets these yellow flowers on top, and they have a, a neat little sparkle effect, too. Huh? Pretty neat, right? <laughs> so this is a food source. Oh, oh. Are they prickly? Oh, they are prickly. See? In all my testing, you know, I'm, I'm flying around in creative a lot. <laughs> so now when I'm actually playing the game, it's like, wait a minute. What? What is hitting me? Why is this plant poisonous? Finding all these things out. Uh, so this is food. You can make a gel out of it. You can bundle it. You can do all kinds of cool things. You make a, another gel block, food. So, pretty interesting. I think it can heal, too. Oh, you can eat it when you're full. Like, uh, we have full food right now, but we get the saturation still. Yeah, so check it out. These are called yucca trees. They're pretty interesting, because you got, like, your, your logs, you got your leaves, and then they got flowers on the top. I think that might be the sapling. I'm not sure, though. I'm going to have to chop one down to find out. These are also growing randomly throughout the desert here. And they even seem to have a fruit, I just noticed. On some of them, they have these these berry things, berry bundles growing down. Let's let's chop one of these. It's like a, there's a vine there. What are these called? It's yucca fruit. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, can we do anything cool with them? Uh, oh, a green dye, really? Oh, that's really useful. Honing available, iron axe. <laughs> Oh, man. They have, like, knockback to them. Like, really strong knockback, too. From a plant. <laughs> That's different. Oh, we got a sapling. So that, I think that came from the leaf, actually, not from these. Yeah, so you might have noticed as we're chopping down trees that we've been getting some upgrades on our axe. Please stay away. <laughs> That's a rattlesnake. Um, actually, let's, let's, let's get rid of this guy. <laughs> He drops uh, a rattle? Rattlesnake rattle, yeah. Can I shake it? No. Oh, that would have been cool. <laughs> Play some music with it. Um, okay, yeah. We've been getting upgrades on our axe here. You noticed we some parts were settling. We also got a honing upgrade. So when a part settles, you get more of these integrity uh, usage slots. So we're at 3 out of 6 right now. And basically, those are upgrades available. Like, you can add more and more parts to your tool, more upgrades to it, the more integrity it has. So that's good. But then honing is like a special attribute system. The tools have an experience level to them. And uh, once you get enough experience, you get a honing level. And then I have no idea how to apply it, though. <laughs> Shift. Oh, I don't like reading. There's a lot of reading there. Okay, I got to figure it out here. Honing doesn't get applied to the handle. It's just to the, the tool head. So if we click the iron axe here, now we can see it. So we can either choose to add damage, efficiency, durability, or speed. It's like an attribute that gets permanently applied. Uh, I want to go for... What's the difference between efficiency and speed? Speed might be for, for like fighting. Let's go chop efficiency. Own the module to increase axe efficiency. Yes, yes. So we've applied the honing level. And we also got a different type of cactus in this desert. They grow in these clusters and like they got the little tiny version and they get bigger and bigger instead of like one block on top of another. <laughs> uh, ooh, ooh, they prick you even when you mine them. Or did I walk on it? I might have walked on it. Okay, let's see what we can do with this. Can we make green dye? Orange dye? Barrel Cactus Batch. I think that's just like a block of them. Okay, so I just dug down in the desert here. We're going to do the caving now. I want to set my spawn here and leave the bed just in case I die. You know, it won't be such a long walk. We're, we're just a little bit over 500 blocks away from our spawn. So, <laughs> I figured the caves would be different here. And yeah, they're quite a, quite a bit different of a biome. Different blocks here. There's even like some... Some roots growing down. Uh, I can't mind that. 
Oh, it's a pick. Petrified log. Oh, that makes sense. So it's like a rock. <laughs> Ooh, man. I, oh, I'm feeling rusty. I, I almost let that guy blow up on me. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, and... Some vines growing on here. So we're on the lookout here for andesite especially. That's like the main thing we need for the create mod. Ooh. Uh, but we haven't got diamonds yet or gold really, so that stuff's always good too. And there's uh, some new rocks here, like quite a few different rocks. I think this is jasper. Yeah, jasper, arid rock. Oh my goodness. <laughs> just blow up. Just, just do it. Oh yeah, this is a big one, isn't it? I think I saw a mine shaft. Yeah, there's some rails there. We should go check that out. Sometimes those have really good items in the chests. Uh, I'm just gonna try light it up, and then I'll I'll go through here later and pick up all the ores. When when I don't waste your guys' time, you know. <laughs> oh, lapis, good. Need more of that. Gonna run through, run through, light up. But do it smartly, you know. I, I'm paying attention to what's happening. Oh. He came out of no Oh, there's another one. Oh. <laughs> Spiders on the walls. Spiders, they uh, they shoot webs at you. And you can't break them. You have to wait for them to despawn. So they're really threatening, actually. They, they kind of freeze you in place. Uh... Huh. Okay, let's let's check out this way. It might not be as bad. There's a lot of mobs. Oh, a chest! Wait a sec. Gotta get the chest. And that's vanilla cactus. Good. Now I can get some green dye. Perfect. One of those little statue guys. I don't know how they work. Um, he's got an emerald in his hand. You see that little guy over there? I have to give him an item. I don't know. Oh, I messed up. <laughs> if you scare them, they disappear like that. And I don't quite know how not to make... I don't know how to make that not happen, you know? Uh, what do we got here? We got Hunter's Vest. Bone Club. Name tag, food. Very good. Oh, and Redstone. This is my first Redstone. Oh, boy. Okay, we got a slight problem here. Inventory is kind of full. Backpack and everything. Let's leave all these, like, single block things and just pick up the good stuff. I'll probably have to go home and then come back again. We'll leave the petrified, the gabbro. We got another one. Katana. Oh, a thundering quiver. This copper quiver channels the power of lightning grats. Five electrified arrows. Oh, oh he scared me. This is an artifact from the Dungeons Gear mod. So I right clicked it. Did it drop arrows or what happened there? Oh, man, why do I have to have an inventory full? We're just getting the good stuff here. I'm going to leave the rattle behind. Oh, there's rope, too. I want that. Gold and apple. The diamonds. I didn't even see those. We got to burn those. Okay, I tell you what. We're just going to run through this mine shaft a little bit further, see what else there is, and then I'm going to run home and drop off stuff and then come back here and probably do a bit of mining off camera. Um... Oh, that's the end of it. Okay. <laughs> I, I do want to check out these artifacts we got, too. So hopefully we'll find a couple mobs to test them on. I don't know if there's traps or anything here. I'm, I'm just kind of running through, not really thinking about that. <laughs> that might be part of this. I don't know. Also a chance I'm going to get lost. I haven't really thought about that either. I'll, I'll just dig up, though, if it happens. Okay, this goes down to nothing. Oh, guys, I actually wanted to try find this type of block. This is good stuff. I think this could go well at our base as like a foundation material. Oh, oh that made me jump. That made me jump very, very badly. <laughs> All right, let's try out some artifacts. So I think this is either like I got to click on a mob with it or I got to combine it with a bow. That's what it is. Okay, so you get a thunder for five arrows. <laughs> All right, I'm getting I'm getting destroyed here. I gotta use my shield. Try out this weapon. Oh, that might be good. 
We're gonna test out the weapon on him. Let's get some good lighting. Uh oh. One shot. Oh, well, that wasn't a, that wasn't a real test. Okay, let's try this. He's armored. Three, four, five, six. Okay. <laughs> Still counting. Um, there's nine, I think. Man, should I eat the golden apple? I'm, I'm gonna eat the golden apple just to get the inventory spot. Uh, this said it did. Oh, I thought it was 18. It's 13 hearts damage. Compared to 6, or our axe is currently 8.5. Oh, a barrel here. Bombs. Frost Slayer. What? Extra damage, sharpness 1, and knockback 1. Oh, and another totem. Oh, there's so much good stuff. I gotta take this, though, right? I have to. There's a zombie down there. <laughs> okay, that's my kind of weapon. I like that. I don't know how I didn't see that guy even. <laughs> he was trying to find me. There's nothing around me. There's no trees to block the creeper. And somehow he snuck up on me. Oh, I, I, I was just looking at the dust devils. Oh, they're throwing things at me. Okay. We'll have to check those out another day. Oh, I heard a kitty. No! <laughs> How? How do you guys always find me? Look at that jump he did. Alright, this that was pretty good. Only three swings with the sword. So we went back home, we dropped off our stuff, but I didn't see any andesite in the desert caves either there. So my backup plan, if we couldn't find any, was to go to the nether, <laughs> get some quartz, and then... Craft and a site using uh, cobblestone and quartz, right? But I decided to do a couple random dig down checks here and I actually found some right by spawn. So it doesn't spawn like it does in vanilla Minecraft where it's kind of scattered everywhere. It seems to spawn in these big giant pockets in only certain areas. You know what I just realized that's making me feel a little bit on the dumb side, maybe? <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been going around everywhere looking for andesite, and I'm just like walking on this stuff. <laughs> it's everywhere in our base. I could have just stole it. Ah. Uh, uh, anyways. So why do we need andesites? What's the big deal? So a lot of the create items, uh, the stuff you craft and create, requires andesite for this alloy. So you either got to mix iron nuggets with andesite or zinc. Zinc is uh, kind of all over the place here. So I've been uh, smelting some of that. And what you do is you just take your zinc, you turn it to nuggets, and we're going to probably make bajillions of these things if we have andesite. Just like that. Yeah, so I'm brand new to the create mod, but this could be the first thing I build with it. Uh, but I have seen quite a few videos on what's possible with it, so I have a general idea. And I also have just been looking at the items here. There's this really cool in-game tutorial. It says hold W to ponder. So you hold W. And it brings up this like video tutorial for you, which is really cool. And it kind of goes through all the features the items have. So it's showing you you can strip logs with it, um, how to do that. And if we go over to the next page here, to so the next thing it can do, it can chop down trees. When given rotational force, a mechanical saw will cut trees directly in front of it, and it chops the whole tree. In order to cut the tree fully, the saw has to break the last block connecting it to the ground. And you see there's like a rod in the back there and some gears rotating it. What, that's what we got to figure out is how to rotate the saw. <laughs> uh, and then it kind of goes through some other things here. Whenever saws are moved as part of an animated contraption, so you see the piston heads extending, it breaks the tree. And then it pulls it back. So we're going to cheat a little bit here on our first project. I think we need to make an encased fan. And this propeller, normally you got to create another machine for smashing down these plates. But since we got immersive engineering installed, I'm just going to I'm gonna cheese it here <laughs> and do it manually. Bam. Oh, we got a million hammers. I did not want that. Uh, we take our hammer and we can smash it into the plates. Let's just do four. He really wants the carrot. I'm, I'm going to give him a carrot. Oh man, look at him, he's so happy. <laughs> so uh, I'm pretty sure we're gonna need a slime ball for the sticky piston. Now, Create does add a recipe for making slime here. 
you gotta get dough but in order to do that you either gotta crush or i think you can mill wheat which requires setting up another machine uh we're gonna cheese it though i think if we can find a jellyfish we can get slime from that whoa look at all the crabs oh there's a jellyfish that's what we're looking for i think yes it is all right so we smelt that we get slime Okay, let's do this. Let's see if we can uh, create something here. <laughs> so I made a toolbox. Pretty much crafted everything I think we're going to need. Even got a wrench here in case we need that as well. Um, so this is cool. The toolbox allows you to take stuff out. And then when you're done with it, return. And they go back in. So that's, that's very convenient. So I'm mostly just going to copy that tutorial it gave us. So we're going to go with the mechanical sticky piston. I think we need to send it power in the sides there. That's what the rod's for. Uh, but we just attach our saw to that on the front, and ooh, eagles around. <laughs> and then we determine how far that extends based on how many of these extension poles are on the back. So it's you guys remember the Pistronics mod? It's kind of similar to that. Uh huh. Okay, so now we need to power it on the side with the rod. Pretty sure. And I made something not in the tutorial, the gear shift. So I noticed like they were changing the direction of the rotation somehow. And I think we can use this to do that. So this will switch between clockwise or counterclockwise based on the redstone signal. Okay, so that's how we can make it extend or retract the piston. And then I have no idea what to do here. <laughs> I made a... Uh, the encased fan, I think this is a power source for it, but I don't know if we can attach it. So let's just put it down and see. So there is a rod on that side. The fan's over there. Okay. So that should be connected. I think you just need to put a, a fire source underneath this, like a campfire works even. But I don't know if that'll work or if the fire needs to go on the fan side. I'm guessing it does. Nope. <laughs> I got no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, that is the fan side. Not doing anything, though. Uh-oh. Fans facing down into a source of heat can provide rotational force. Oh, they have a lever on it. I think we figured it out. Ta-da! What if we put the cog wheel on there and then one over here? Huh. Get our regular gearbox, and then we craft it like that, and it switches it. Okay, and then let's just look at it. Pretty sure that'll work. Okay, let's try it out. Yes! Oh, it's turning! It's turning, guys! <laughs> let's try shift this. Oh, look at it go! It's very slow. <laughs> So that would be the next part of this to try to figure out is how to speed things up. But we don't need this super fast, I don't think. Or I hope not anyway. So it's, it's going to reach up to here. All right, let's plant our sapling. Let's uh, bow mill it and then... Chop that tree. Chop that tree. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, it's going. Yes. <laughs> All right, it's a little bit slow, but it's fine. It's I'm proud of that. I'm happy. Oh, oh. Okay, so it stops the block before the log, then does it. And now, yeah, I put the stuff inside. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh-oh. Oh, it's not sticky anymore because, uh, right, the stickiness is on the piston, not on the thing here. So I need more sticky stuff. Oh, okay, so it doesn't use up the slime when you make them sticky. When you when you apply it like that. That's cheap. <laughs> Alright, so my plan now is we're going to upgrade to two mechanical saws. Still haven't figured out why they sometimes place one way and sometimes they don't. There we go. Uh, and then we'll put our chest here. And the idea is... Let's see. So that's going to go up to here. So that'll chop the tree there, and then we'll grow another one here. I think the crows are eating my crops. <laughs> so if we just grow that in front, it doesn't chop it. It's only when it's moving, I think, that it'll engage. It kind of goes into standby, I think. But if we go back, it like does it right away. You see that? 
Uh huh. And then on the return, should chop this one, I think. We're only going to be doing one by ones today, one by one trees, so this should be good enough. Uh huh. And our stuff is in the chest. Excellent. Okay, so now let's start shifting into building mode here. We got to collect a whole bunch of uh, the maple logs as well as the red mushroom logs. Remember, we want to strip these. Got to make sure this machine will actually chop this as well. I just put a sun shield over top there so we can grow mushrooms here without uh, any trouble. Looks like it's doing it. Aw, snap. Okay, so I'm going to spend a bit of time doing this. Oh, it doesn't get doesn't get all of it. So thankfully, though, with the upgrades on our axe, we can instant mine this stuff. But uh, yeah, it looks like I got to do a little bit of it manually still. Although I should try with um, maybe if I don't strip it, maybe that'll be fine. Maybe because I stripped it, it doesn't know what it is. Let's try that again. Nope. <laughs> okay. Well, it's looking like bone meal is going to be our main limiting factor. I'm going to have to fight some skellies at nighttime, but we got a bit of stuff farmed up here to get us going. Uh, so let's get to building our base. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, I built in a little bit of a weird way here. I don't build like, I don't plan out my builds entirely uh, right off the bat. I do a patchwork style. I, I try to make like pieces of it look good and then move on to the next piece, if that makes sense. We're going to start with the entrance of our, our base here. Yeah, so I was hoping to use that limestone we found as a bit of a foundation for our base. Like, it'll be the cobble at the bottom that the, the structure is supported by. Um, and then we'll go for, like, stairs across here. This is going to be a very finicky work. I'll have to cut, like, most of this out. But uh, I think they work together pretty well, right? And then we'll do the same on this side. And yeah, we're doing a traditional Japanese style base here. I don't actually know Japanese architecture though, so I'm not trying to copy it perfectly. <laughs> but when I think of Japanese architecture, I think of like paper walls. I think of big grand decks that wrap around the building, uh, clay shingle tiles, um, stuff like that, right? And we're going to try to do this weird entrance thing. I don't know what they're called, but you might recognize it when you see it. Um, whoa, we got the pillager raid. Something like that. What do I do about these guys? I think they're afraid of the sunlight or something. They're not coming after me. Oh, oh that went through my shield. <laughs> no, 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 no. So we got uh, the dungeons mob mod added to this as well. So it adds all the mobs from... Minecraft dungeons, including these armored pillagers and a uh, whole bunch more. Even the isologers in this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're very tough. A lot of the mobs it adds. So these guys are like tanks. Emeralds! Oh, and they dropped the helmet too. Gold pillager helmet. That's not bad. All right, check it out. We're starting to piece it together here. I spent a whole bunch of time trying to get this looking organic. We got a, a walkway up to the entrance here. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it was tough. I think it's okay, though. I'm going to build this up, land out probably a bit more, though. And then we will probably use some path blocks to transition to that, too. But I'm not quite sure yet. Um, yeah, so I want to add the deck now. So we're going to transition from the cobblestone foundation to, like, a deck now. The bamboo deck. And I want it to line up with this. So, how far do we have to go here? Three blocks. Okay, is that going to be too steep, I wonder? I'm having a hard time judging it. It feels like it might be a bit too grand of an entrance. Like, we're going up quite a bit vertically. It's pretty long. <laughs> but I do plan on building a pretty large, like, mansion here. I want our first space to be fairly large. Because in modded Minecraft, you can never have enough space is what I've learned. Having a big building right off the bat is awesome. If you're willing to put in the work, which I am. Um, okay, so let's go back down here. Let's let's work out this section. So I put like a, a shingled covered area here. Um, and I'm trying to make it look organic to a certain extent, right? So I'm adding little imperfections in, even though I could make things straight. So like, I don't need to add these stairs here, for example, but I did just to add a bit of variation. I added in a, a log and a stair here, even though it doesn't really need it, but it helps to 
change things up. This path makes it organic, all the randomness to it. We're going to go up here. Oh, am I out of maple already? Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> oh, I got scared. So this is going to come up. We're going to have a big post that goes up and supports uh, shingled roof a little higher as well on both sides here. And I don't want them to line up. Like I, I could easily make them line up like it makes sense to, but that little bit of imperfection where one's higher than the other will help make it look uh, a lot better, I think. Mm, nope. Mm, yeah. All right, everybody. So I don't have time to go through the whole building process here. It's mostly me just ho humming over little details, but I kind of like how this is looking now. Uh, I'm starting to use this terracotta brick stuff. We might decorate with flower pots around the place and stuff. Uh, those are jungle fences. I think that looks pretty good. And we'll we'll keep a similar style throughout uh, the area here. Uh, so I'm thinking as well, we might add some of this in other places, like along the bottom of our foundation. I don't know if that makes sense at all, but it will help add some color down there. Just a little bit like that. Huh? I, I kind of like that. Um, okay, so how are we actually building the house? What's the process for that? I'll just show you that real quick. We start with the white walls and generally just pick a, a shape that I think looks good. So I had an idea here for um, like this will come up. I want the paper walls doing this and then we'll have a break, another break. This will come over and then we'll copy that. We'll mirror it. Yeah, something like that. So the idea is we're going to make these big white blobs with the paper walls in, we put the blue shingles over top of that. And then on the sides, we always have the maple logs to kind of frame them in. And then we just stack a bunch of these big white blobs together in like staggered form and it should create a house is what I'm hoping. <laughs> and we'll probably put the entrance to the building right here. Oh boy. Okay, everybody. Well, I might have attempted to do a little bit too much here today. <laughs> I've been building for hours. And it's, uh, it's my bedtime now. So I think this is where we're going to have to wrap her up. But we got quite a bit done here. About half, I would say. It's huge, though. And I keep running out of this, like, blue tile stuff. Uh-huh. So I raided the swamp for some clay to, to make it. But I got to go back again. We also kind of ran out of this stuff. So I got to go get more of that. But let's let's just take a step back and, and take a gander, shall we? See where we're at. So I love the blue tiles with the, the pink trees in the background. I think that turned out pretty cool. And we're kind of just like staggering things, building it up. We're kind of building it up to the cliff there. I think that side's gonna be really easy though because uh, like it's gonna be so high up on the cliff there that I don't really have to do much with it. <laughs> so that'll, that'll be good. And I got uh, the other side done. We got two out of the four sides done basically is where we're at and no interior done. So if we go over here, check this out. This is like uh, a deck on this side, a side entrance. Um, I think it turned out pretty good, right? Oh, oh, I keep getting jumped by mobs here. So yeah, there's like a side deck here and then it wraps around and we go inside the main building here. And uh, this is about as far as we got. So I think there's gonna be a basement and then maybe an upstairs as well because it actually goes pretty, pretty high up there, doesn't it? Anyways, I think it's wrap up time here guys. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode I'm gonna keep working on this. Uh, hopefully we'll have it ready at the start of the next one And then we can move into our brand new base and start Decorating it putting gizmos in it and hopefully start automating stuff. I would love to automate clay production now after doing this <laughs> Oh man, that would be great uh, And also by the way, thank you so much for all the the feedback and all the wonderful response on the first episode I really appreciate that glad you guys are excited about the series and I'm having a ton of fun playing it So let's keep it going here. All right All right guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day. Take care. Bye. Bye. Oh I, I forgot I got a wave. There we go. <laughs> bye. Bye